Welcome, everyone, to the inaugural Duke Men's Lacrosse Show. I'm your host, J.D. Blitch, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Coach John Donowski, head coach of the men's lacrosse team at Duke and the winningest coach in Division I men's lacrosse history. Coach, I'm ecstatic about starting this show with you. Thanks for being here. J.D., uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for uh, coming to us and wanting to put on this uh, uh, put on the show. Um, delighted that members of the Duke community are, are interested in our program. Absolutely. Uh, I think this is going to be a ton of fun for us and the listeners. And since this is the first edition of the show, season one, episode one, I'm going to quickly explain to our audience what we'll be doing here. Uh, this will be a weekly show, podcast style, where Coach Janowski and I are talking Duke lacrosse, what's working for the team and what's not. And we'll just get the head coach's perspective on how the season is going. And in addition, the, the part I'm really excited for is every week we'll shift into discussing Coach Janowski's philosophy of the game, how he approaches coaching lacrosse, and what makes him effective at leading a team. We're going to try to peel back the curtain and understand why Coach does what he does, and we'll learn a little bit more each week. Uh, we're also going to have assistant coaches join the show, as well as players from the team. They'll give us a little added perspective, and it's going to be a blast. And then to wrap up each week's show, we'll take a look at what's on tap for the week ahead and get a scouting report of Duke's upcoming opponents. So uh, we've got a lot to dive into this week, and that's plenty of me talking so far. Coach, let's kick things off by asking, has your view of this team changed any after its 3-1 and one start? Kind of what have you learned about the team so far that you didn't know going into the season? Well, I think uh, a couple of things. It's a great question. You know, uh, one of the reasons we schedule the four games early is, is to find out uh, what this team is you know, where the potential is, where, where perhaps some strengths, where perhaps uh, weaknesses, um, things we need to work on. Uh, all the different game situations we've been in in the last two weeks, you, you just can't simulate that in practice. It's, uh, it, it was a phenomenal experience both weekends. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you're going to play these games and you're going to, you know, the reason that, you know, Chris Kennedy, our boss, always tells us that uh, it's only fun if you can lose. And uh, unfortunately, you know, Sunday didn't work out, but there are great lessons and losses. And I think we're, we're, um, we're excited to get back to practice today and, and try to correct some of the things and get better at those. Um, the things I think that we like so far, we like our effort. Uh, we like um, that our, some of our younger guys have gotten a lot of playing time. Sophomores are back playing. We're playing at home in front of crowds, which is all new to our sophomores. Um, and, and so getting back into that game day feel, uh, that was really important. Uh, we had two guys, uh, two different people face off, Jake Naso and Jordan Ginder. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they got a lot of reps um, over both weekends. Um, you know, Mike Adler back in the goal, um, got a steady dose of a, a, lot, of, a lot of shots um, defensively. Um, we got some new personnel, you know, that are playing for the first time. And it's, uh, uh, that's going to be a, a work in progress. Um, offensively, th there's not a um, a guy, a quarterback so far, and um, and so we're searching for that a little bit. But on the other hand, we have six guys that are all capable of making plays. Um, I think that Sunday's loss was a, a, a really obvious a lack of attention to detail. Um, you know, you really have to be at this level. You have to be a master of your position, a master of your craft. And to really understand who you are um, and what is fundamentally sound. And I don't think as a team, individually, we were fundamentally sound. Uh, I don't know that we communicated well. And if, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. If, you, if you're not sound and you don't communicate, um, it's going to be a long afternoon. And uh, certainly Sunday, you know, the better team won. So, you know, overall, I think we're really... Um, I can't say happy, sad. Um, it's you know it's February lacrosse, and and it's really early, uh, and it's time mm -hmm. to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Absolutely, thanks, Coach. Um, so you mentioned the Jacksonville game may have been just a lack of concentration or focus. Um, do you think that the team's success in the first three games may have contributed to that, and uh, possibly caused a sense of complacency, or was it just an off day for a team that 
will bounce back. No, I, I don't know that it was an off day. You know, you got to tip your cap to your opponent. Jacksonville played real well, and, and uh, they had played Johns Hopkins on the road a week before. Um, I think the game was more important to the Jacksonville kids than it was to ours, um, which is hard to say because, you mm-hmm. know, you only get 17 of these, you know, and every one of them should be precious. But with that being said, you know, we see that in college athletics. You see that in professional athletics, uh, uh, you know, uh, every day. Um, not easy to bring it all the time but to me you can always be sound you know you can always be fundamentally sound and 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 maybe we weren't well coached you know maybe um, we got away with some things in the first three games that didn't hurt us but came back to hurt us on Sunday and so you know I, I, I look I take it personally and and I just look at it and say geez you know we were poorly coached um, and there's and, and of the things that that I saw on tape that I think we can fix and so um, we, get, we get to work today to try to fix those things. And sometimes when you win, you overlook those. You know, you mm-hmm. think, all right, we got away with one, but, you know, you, you might tell the guys that you got away with it, but until you practice it and they get the repetition, you know, it's like anything else. It's like playing a musical instrument or, you know, you just got to put the time in. And, and so now that's, that's the plan. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So could you walk us through some of, those things that will be worked on in practice. You said film was helpful in identifying some errors and uh, areas of concern that can be worked on. Um, What are some of those? You know, I think uh, in general, I would say everybody needs to do their job. Sometimes when you're an upperclassman, you try to do a little too much because you think that that's leadership and you don't trust your teammates. Uh, and, And that's a, you know, that can be looked at in a positive light. That, that can be a role uh, positive when you're, when you're trying to help a teammate, but you've got to trust your teammates that they're going to do their jobs. So I think some of our upperclassmen were a little, a little overzealous on both sides of the ball. Then I thought fundamentally, um, off that, defensively, we, weren't, uh, we didn't approach the ball properly, so we're going to work on a lot of approaches. Uh, you know, we want to be able to take away, uh, you know, half of the field, and uh, we didn't do that. And that's just going to come from repetition and from some hard coaching, you know. Um, And what I mean by that is boys are going to have to have a little thick skin this week. Um, And offensively, uh, it's more of a collective kind of, um, I don't need to press. Um, I I need to let the game come to me. Um, And then I need to be in the spots to help my teammates be successful. Uh, once again, I think we got a little disorganized. Um, the fourth quarter, we actually played our best uh, in the box on offense, and probably because the pressure was off. You know, we were mm-hmm. losing by so much that, you know, the guys probably said, hey, let's just kind of play, and we did, and it was actually the best best of the four quarters. Now, the first quarter, we had some opportunities to make some plays, and we didn't make them, and so when you look back over 60 minutes, uh, sometimes it's just about making a play on offense. Yes, sir. So oftentimes when your team is down in a game, you may tell the guys, let's just win the next 10 minutes or the next eight minutes. Um, Did that occur on Sunday when you were down 13-7? And uh, what can you take away from the fact that the team did win the last segment of the game uh, ending on a 5-1 to run? You know, I mean, it's it's the old story. It, it's uh, it's one play at a time. You know, there are no two point shots like mm-hmm. in the PLL. There's no three point shots like there is in basketball, and you do need to make one play at a time. And that might be as simple as boxing out or picking up a ground ball or clearing through for a teammate. Um, it's it's not about running through six guys or it's not about you know shooting from uh, you know 15 or 18 yards. You know, it's about being poised and being patient in those situations. And I think we did. I think we did show some some patience overall. There were some plays I think we would like to have back. You know, and in a 14-12 game, you know, it's always, you know, you watch a film and, and, and when you watch film, there's no emotion, right? So there's no mm-hmm. intangibles. It's all just a very tangible product. So it's almost not fair, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, in terms of will and passion and, you know, poise. But, um, you know, I said to the team this morning, we had a film session, and I said, uh, which two plays would you like to have back? Because if you can mm-hmm. get two plays back on either offense or defense, you win the game. Yes, sir. Now, it doesn't work like that, certainly, but it, it, I think it highlights the fact that the plays, uh, the game is won and lost over the course of 60 minutes. 
you know, not just in the last quarter. Yes, sir. And which players from the team have stood out the most to you so far and kind of exceeded expectations? You know, again, I, I think early on, you know, you'd have to say that the younger guys in their first four games, Andrew McAdory and Cole mm-hmm. Krause, mm-hmm. you know, would be two that you would say, um, wow, you know, they're, uh, Cole's a redshirt freshman and Andrew's a freshman. And, you know, those guys, Keith Boyer has shown glimpses in a very limited uh, time mm-hmm. as a freshman. Now, he's an interesting uh, case because uh, did not play his senior year in high school because uh, he uh, tore his labrum in football. They had a spring football season um, as the you know as the mm-hmm. academic year got truncated with uh, COVID, um, and then uh, he didn't play the year before because of COVID. So now he hasn't played organized lacrosse since the spring of 2019. Wow, you know, and and so it was like he never missed a beat, and, and so we were very impressed with him. Um, I think Garrett Ledman playing the short stick defensive mm-hmm. midfield position has scored four goals, you know, in four games, um, which will give us some pop coming from the defensive end, um, coming off the faceoff game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Garrett was uh, was very impressive over the two weekends. Yes, sir. These players have really stood out, and um, with the freshmen, the game can kind of come at them quickly. Uh, as a coach, how do you? help freshmen adjust to the speed of the college game. Is there anything specifically you do in practice to uh, help the freshmen adjust and you know so that they're at their best? There's absolutely nothing that we can do. Okay. There is, uh, they've got to go in there and they've got to uh, sink or swim. Yes, it's like sir. when you were younger and your mother threw you in the pool and it was, all right, let's go, swim to me, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and if you're starting to slip and starting to go into the water, well, we'll take you out. You know, but yes, if you're sir. doing fine, you know, if you're swimming, um, we'll keep you in. You stay, you get to stay in the pool, and and I think really that's kind of um, that that is the only thing that you can do with with younger people. Yes, sir. I like that analogy. Um, and new to the coaching staff this year is Alex Concanon, a former player at Johns Hopkins and Hofstra. Uh, what has he brought to the coaching staff so far? Well, Alex is young. You know, he is uh, first time coaching. Um, and, and so he's uh, still feeling his way, you know, he showed up the first week in January. So he's mm-hmm. getting a feel for the campus. He's getting a feel for our players, our system, how we do things. He's used to two other systems. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, he's trying to make the, the adjustment and the transition. Um, but what he, uh, he's done a great job with our goalies. Um, he, uh, game day, he works the box, the substitution box, which is not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like being a traffic cop, you know, in, in Times Square. There are people, bodies flying, situations changing, you know, at the spur of the moment, and uh, that's not an easy uh, thing to do. So uh, I wouldn't want to run the box, that's for sure. Yes, sir. That's awesome. And how did y'all meet? I know he played one season at Hofstra, and you coached there for 21 years. Is there any connection through that? Yeah, basically, uh, you know, I had my feelers out. Um, Seth Tierney, um, who who coached for me at Hofstra and who is now the head coach there. Mm-hmm. Joe Amplo, who was the uh, head coach at uh, Naval Academy and – um, you know, a couple of guys, I just said, hey, listen, uh, if you know of anybody, you know, just shoot us their name or, you know, give us, give me a call. And that's basically how it started. And Seth just gave me a call and said, listen, I have a young man that played for me last year and he's got a great pedigree uh, being from Hopkins and, and playing his sixth year at Hofstra. And, um, and so um, we were delighted uh, that he wanted to take a chance and join the dark side and be a coach. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I know he's a... Great person to have joined the staff, and Blue Devil fans should be thrilled that he's helping the team and giving his insights. And, um, Coach, every year you have new faces on the team with freshmen coming in and grad transfers as well, and you're trying to form a group of guys that are unified and have a sense of team chemistry. Um, what are some of the team-building exercises you did this off offseason, um, and what, what were the most effective ones at building team chemistry? Well, we're constantly trying to get we're trying to constantly get our players to have real conversations with each other. You know, you're in college and you have a lot of superficial conversations about all sorts of topics, but we try to dig in to some of the more um, you know either critical topics of the day. Right now, it's you know February, so it's Black History Month. Mm-hmm. So um, I show a, a short video, um, and then we kind of discuss what we saw in the video um, before the. Uh, before the Manhattan game, um, 
I, I showed about a four minute video of Frederick Douglass. Um, now I, I just happened to be finishing the book, uh, the president and the freedom fighter, mm-hmm. which is about the life of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. So it was easy for me to kind of start that conversation and, and who he was. And, um, and then we, we, you know, we just kind of, we want guys to, to speak up and, and, and I don't want to do the talking. And then we, uh, Sunday or Saturday night, um, in our team meeting before we have a team meeting the night before every game, um, we showed another little video, uh, and that was about, um, the history of, um, uh, African Americans in music. Um, and then we had guys re- react to that. So, you know, we want them talking about hard things. We want them to be not afraid to, to, you know, to, to speak your truth and, um, and it kind of starts in there, but the hope is that it carries forward into the locker room, into the dining areas, you know, back to the dorms, um, you know, in the residence halls, um, that they continue to have those conversations on the bus rides, on a plane ride. Yes, sir. Um, that's really important to us. Awesome. Um, and then you often will talk about you know, re- recruiting players with a high lacrosse IQ. Um, could you explain what that is and what is the difference between a high IQ player and a low IQ player? What does, what does the high IQ player do that an average player will not? Well, I think the first thing that we try to look at, even more important than high lacrosse IQ, is a high athletic IQ. Mm-hmm. Meaning, he, you know, we look for student athletes who play multiple sports in high school, who were football players, who were basketball, hockey, soccer, mm-hmm. wrestling who are used to being competitive, are used to being coached, are used to being coached by different personalities and different people. Um, you know, the, the lacrosse, uh, and then the lacrosse IQ um, is really a function of having a really good high school coach. The club thing sometimes is hit or miss because a lot of times uh, for the club experience, um, they don't practice a lot. They mm-hmm. play a lot of games, but they don't have a lot of practices. So, you know, for us... We want to, um, you know, we're looking for guys who have these multi, these these multi sport experiences in high school, and you know, being a defensive back in football, John Thomas Giles Harris, you know, last year, mm-hmm. you know, was a three sport athlete. So there's no, so when he's a first team All American, you know, we're not shocked. The guy Montgomery, you know, was a high school football player, so he's a first team All American. Well, that's not surprising to any of us um, mm-hmm. that they understand sports they understand uh you know movement they understand uh preparation and study um where maybe um and somebody who has uh, and we do take projects we take kids who maybe uh are raw athletically Mm -hmm. um and show some potential um but it's um you know the iq piece is just as important as the athletic piece or just as important and then you know what is the student's upside because sometimes you beat your opponent with your athletic ability sometimes you beat them with your iq and sometimes you beat them with your heart you know the ideal Mm -hmm. would be to beat them with all three absolutely you know but uh two out of three sometimes is enough yes sir all right so i want to move into some more uh quick hitter questions i guess Mm -hmm. if we wanted to get clever we could call this section the face off or something like that um what is your favorite stadium to coach in Favorite stadium to coach in besides Koskinen yes, Stadium, sir. certainly. Um, you know, Clockner at University of Virginia is a great place to play. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's uh, it, it. Just has a great history, and um, it just the, the setting. There's always great crowds, and people are very, you know, very pro Virginia and, and very enthusiastic. So that's one of my favorite spots. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and your favorite NFL team. New York Giants. The Giants. The New York G- football Giants. Absolutely. Big blue. <laughs> yes, sir. Thoughts on the Super Bowl? Were you cheering for anybody? Well, we were actually watching game film up until game time. Okay. And then we actually watched the Super Bowl this year uh, from here in the office. Uh, Coach Computer nice. and I took a break. Uh, then at halftime, we knew it was an extended halftime. We were able to finish the fourth quarter during halftime and then watch the second half. Secretly, I was rooting for the Bengals, mm-hmm. I think. Yes, sir. You know, um, a little more of the underdog role. Um, but it was, uh, you know, I just wanted to see a great game. You Absolutely. Know, a lot of drama. We got that drama at the end of the game. Yes, sir. And uh, you're a big music guy. What was your first concert ever that you went to? First concert ever, Jethro Tull at oh. the Nassau Coliseum. It wasn't Beethoven? 
Uh, no, no. Um, <laughs> classical music, you know, I, I have a, um, an appreciation, but uh, it was Jethro Tull. Uh, all right. And uh, just coming off the Aqualung uh, album. Yes, for, for those older fans that are uh, that might one or two who might be listening, <laughs> that's great. Um, and give us a look ahead to Denver uh, the game on Saturday. Uh, what what are you doing to prepare for the Denver team? I know uh, Jack Hanna as a Tawarton Award watch list presents a lot of challenges to any opposing team. Uh, what do you do to prepare for a player like that? Well, first thing is you know um, they're two and zero. Right, so they've got wins over uh, over Utah and Air Force Academy. Um, Billy Tierney is the head coach. He's in the Lacrosse Hall of Fame for a reason. He's got national championships mm-hmm. at Princeton, um, and he's got national championships at Denver. He um, he is a Long Island guy, you know. Um, so I've known Billy for years, and he's a great coach. So that's number one. You know, the, their teams never their teams rarely beat themselves. The assistant coach mm-hmm. is Matt Brown who's a coach of the Canadian national team. Matt is an excellent coach. And, and so the two of them together are, are great foils for one another. Um, and, and so that presents our, our first challenge. Um, you know, we've had success the last couple of years against Denver, and that's always dangerous because, yes, you know, you think that, you know, our, our players might think it's going to be easy, it's just going to happen, and the Denver kids will be, you know, loaded for bear. Um, you know, they, they want to, everybody wants to kick Duke's butt, uh, yes, and this week will be no different. All right. Thank you. Um, coach, appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, this has been just an absolute joy getting this started and, uh, I wish you the best of luck in practice this week and, uh, the upcoming games. Just, uh, thank you so much. JD, man, very professional. Um, if anybody, you know, this is obviously not televised, but professional mic setup and and we got it going on here uh, we do uh, so we do JD, i gotta ask you one question man who's right. your first concert uh my first concert was uh i got to see a, a double it was zach brown band and kenny chesney uh performing in the same venue the georgia dome it was a good time well all right yes sir signing off for now this is uh jd blitch with coach danowski thanks for tuning in to the first episode of the duke men's lacrosse show